Freedom is not given, it is taken. No real change in history has ever been achieved by discussions. The secret of political bargaining is to look more strong than what you really are. We should have but one desire today, the desire to die so that India may live, the desire to face a martyr's death, so that the path to freedom may be paved with the martyr's blood. Give me blood and I will give you freedom. It is only on the basis of undiluted nationalism and of perfect justice and impartiality that the Indian Army of Liberation can be built up. Forget not that the grossest crime is to compromise with injustice and wrong. Remember the eternal law, you must give, if you want to get. One individual may die for an idea, but that idea will, after his death, incarnate itself in a thousand lives. When we stand, the Azad Hind Foz has to be like a wall of granite. When we march, the Azad Hind Foz has to be like a steamroller. Soldiers who always remain faithful to their nation, who are always prepared to sacrifice their lives, are invincible. It is our duty to pay for our liberty with our own blood. The freedom that we shall win through our sacrifice and exertions, we shall be able to preserve with our own strength. Reality is, after all, too big for our frail understanding to fully comprehend. Nevertheless, we have to build our life on the theory which contains the maximum truth. We cannot sit still because we cannot, or do not, know the absolute truth. India is calling blood is calling to blood. Get up, we have no time to lose. Take up your arms. We shall carve our way through the enemy's ranks or if God wills, we shall die a martyr's death. And in our last sleep we shall kiss the road that will bring our army to Delhi. The road to Delhi is the road to freedom. Chala Delhi, march to Delhi. As soldiers, you will always have to cherish and live up to the three ideals of faithfulness, duty and sacrifice. Soldiers who always remain faithful to their nation, who are always prepared to sacrifice their lives, are invincible. If you, too, want to be invincible, engrave these three ideals in the innermost core of your hearts. At this unprecedented juncture in our history I have a word for you. Do not be disheartened by our temporary defeat, be cheerful and optimistic. Above all, never lose your faith in the destiny of India. There is no power on earth which can keep India in bondage. India will be free and, that too, soon. Jal Hind Nationalism is inspired by the highest ideals of the human race, Satyam, the true, Shivam, the god, Sundaram, the beautiful. Nationalism in India has, roused the creative faculties which for centuries had been lying dormant in our people. Comrades, you have voluntarily accepted a mission that is the noblest that the human mind can conceive of. For the fulfillment of such a mission no sacrifice is too great, not even the sacrifice of one's life. You are today the custodians of India's national honor and the embodiment of India's hopes and aspirations. So conduct yourself that your countrymen may bless you and posterity may be proud of you. I have no doubt in my mind that our chief national problems relating to the eradication of poverty, illiteracy and disease and the scientific production and distribution can be tackled only along socialistic lines. The very first thing that our future national government will have to do is to set up a commission for drawing up a comprehensive plan for reconstruction. To all of you I should like to say that in the course of this war you will have to acquire the experience and achieve the success which alone can build up a national tradition for our army. An army that has no tradition of courage, fearlessness and invincibility cannot hold its own in a struggle with a powerful enemy. Let me remind you that you have a twofold task to perform. With the force of arms and at the cost of your blood you will have to win liberty. Then. When India is free, you will have to organize the permanent army of free India, whose task it will be to preserve our liberty for all time.
We must build up our national defense on such an unshakable foundation that never again in our history shall we lose our freedom. Gird up your loins for the task that now lies ahead. I had asked you for men, money and materials. I have got them in generous measure. Now I demand more of you. Men, money and materials cannot by themselves bring victory or freedom. We must have the motive power that will inspire us to brave deeds and heroic exploits.